Okay, so now we're going to talk about non-inventory items and other charge items. I'm kind of lumping them into one video because they're very similar uh, in why we would use them. So first let's talk about non-inventory items. Uh, these are items that we do not purchase to stock, right? So we purchase the item and we sell it to the customer. Maybe it's drop shipped to the customer or um, you know, it's not a part that we maintain inventory for, okay? Uh, a lot of times I'll see customers who purchase items per order, right? So the customer uh, requests that they, you know, get a shipment of 100 books. And so instead of maintaining the inventory of those 100 books, we order the 100 books, have them delivered to us, and then we ship those 100 books out to the customer. So again, we use it as a non-inventory part because it's never, it's, we're never going to have books on the shelf where we're going to see, okay, how many books do we have to sell, right? We're never going to maintain an inventory for them. So we'll keep them as a non-inventory part or non-inventory item. And other charges, something very similar. So generally other charges are used for things like shipping or you know handling fees or maybe processing fees. Um, I also suggest in some other videos, we use the other charge for retainage uh, tracking as well as customer deposit tracking. So make sure to check out those videos too. So let's go ahead and look at the setup of items. So first of all, these items are kept on our items list. Right? They wouldn't be in the inventory center because they're not inventory parts. <laughs> so I go in here, I select new, and we have a non-inventory part. Okay, So I'm just going to call it part A. So part A, you can categorize the parts in different sub-items, right? So it can make it a sub-item of, so when I look at my list, right, you can see plans and permits, it has a couple subs. So you can make it a sub item of, you can have a manufacturer's part number that's tracked in here. So again, when we do the purchase order to the manufacturer, right, we uh, potentially need to have the manufacturer's part number on that purchase order. So we can include that in here. You can have multiple units of measure. Okay, so maybe you buy by the case some days and some days you buy by the, you know, barrel. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I always recommend setting every non-inventory part as well as every other charge part uh, up as a, a double-sided item. So the purpose of having double-sided items is that we have on a purchase transaction, it potentially hits a different account, right? So on the purchase transaction, it hits job-related costs. On the sales transaction, it hits construction income as an example, okay? So it allows us to keep those separate. Also, I recommend having them set up in here as non-inventory parts because we can assign a default price to this. So let's say for part A, we expect to be paying $25. If we ever get a bill for part A and the price is not $25, that allows us to kind of double check ourselves, right? If it's $35, we can go back to the manufacturer and say, why are you charging $35? We're expecting $25. So having that default price fill in for you is really important. You can also use a preferred vendor on a non-inventory part. So that's also really important. So you, again, we always buy from tech, AAA tech consultants. It's an important thing so that when you go to purchase, you can easily figure out you know, who you buy this from. Okay, and I'm gonna put on a price of $100 in sales there. <clears throat> so that's a non-inventory part. So a lot of times people will ask me, right? We have non-inventory parts set up for all of our internal office supplies. So we're never gonna sell it. So we really don't need the sales side of the transaction. Then I think it's okay for you to use it as a single sided item. But the thing is, is that if it's on your items list and people have access to create invoices, etc., they have the potential to choose that item on the items list. So it kind of allows us to, to catch, right? So sometimes if we don't expect this product ever to be sold, we'll set it up to a account called other income or miscellaneous income. So it really stands out so that when we're reviewing our financials, we say, oh, you have all this stuff to miscellaneous income. What is it? Somebody sold a whole bunch of part A. Why are we selling part A? We weren't expecting that. Okay, again, it allows us to kind of check ourselves in the system. 
The other reason that you want to use items like non-inventory parts is that I have seen customers set up general ledger accounts for each item that they're selling, right? Part A, part B, part C, cost of goods sold as an example. And you don't really want to do that. You want to keep your chart of accounts at a high level. Um, but by setting the item up as part A, this allows us to break out our sales, right? So we can say, see sales uh, by item summary, and we can see our total inventory parts, our non-inventory parts, our services sales, right? So if we collapse these down, we can see it kind of at a really high level. Okay, so it's important to set them up so they show up on re reports like this. And then it's also important because when you're looking at your items list, so if we have part A, part P, part C, and they all go to job related costs, on the whole, we just care about, you know, how much did we have in job related costs this month. But by using part A, part B, part C, if we needed to drill down into the details, we could run a report and total by item detail to show us how much of part A, part B, part C we sold, even though they're going to the same GL account code, okay? So it's a really important, I really encourage use of items. The other and, and kind of most obvious reason you have to use items is that when you create a purchase order or an estimate or a sales order, you have to use an item. You can't put it straight to a GL account code. On a bill, I have the option, right, or a check. I can put it to job related costs or I can put it to an item. I have the either or scenario here, but on a sales transaction, sales transactions, estimates, invoices, um, sales receipts, and sales orders, you have to use an item. On purchase orders, you have to use an item. So you have to have an item set up for it, okay? So those are non-inventory parts. The thing with non-inventory parts that's important to note is that at the, the time of purchase, so when we enter the bill, if you're running an accrual base accounting, when you enter the bill, that is when it hits the job related costs, right? So it's gonna hit your P&L at the time the bill or the check or the credit card purchase is entered in the system. With inventory parts, of course, when you enter the bill, it hits an asset account at the time of purchase, right? So that's a big difference there. And then on the flip side, at the sales transaction is when it hits the sales account, okay? So at the invoice phase or the sales receipt phase is when it hits the invoice account. So using the non-inventory parts can create a little lag, right? The bill might be dated 630, the invoice is dated 715, and so they're posted into different periods. So you just need to be aware of that, okay? Now, of course, if you're running cash basis, then at the time you pay the bill, it's going to go in the system and for invoicing side at the time the customer pays you, it's going to hit your P&L. Okay. So those are non-inventory parts. Uh, the other one that we wanted to talk about was other charges. Other charges are very similar, so you can see they have a very similar look and feel to them. Um, when you make them a double-sided item, you can have the same fields here. They do not have a manufacturer's part number field on another charge, so that's something to be, just be aware of, right? Um, but what I do like is that you can uh, make these charges. So again, if we're talking about retainage, you can say it's negative 10. Whoops, I'm sorry. If we're talking about retainage, it's, you can say it's negative 10% in this field here. And you have to make it retainage, it's a single-sided item. So it's an amount or a percentage in this field. And so that's why I really like to use it. Same with customer discounts. If we require a 50% discount, as an example, we can use that. So let's make sure to check out those videos about retainage and customer discounts if that's something that applies to your business or what you would be teaching your customers, okay? But other charge is very similar. Um, so we put in a cost, it's a fixed fee. So again, if we have, let's say we're doing shipping charges. Okay, so on the shipping side, we would possibly need to include this as an other charge because again, we're using purchase orders, right? And a purchase order requires an item. So in order to put those shipping costs on the PO, we would need to set up an item for shipping. Then we wanna say that the expense account that it hits 
would be some kind of cost of goods sold account, right, for shipping. And the sales income, so when we when we sell shipping, right, we would want it to go to some kind of income account for, again, shipping. Okay, so that other charge is really important too to make it a double-sided item. If you leave it as a single-sided item for shipping, as an example, you can have them flow through one solo account, right? So it can be shipping charges and it's kind of, you know, you charge people $50.00 you get charged $50 from your vendor and those two should offset each other. But if you have any kind of markup in your shipping that you do, I would really suggest that you separate the two out and have shipping income and shipping COGS so that you can make sure that those markups are actually happening and being effective, okay? Also, if you have it set up as an other charge here, you can go into uh, items reports and see profitability by item right uh, whoops so you know purchases by item summary would be able to see how much we have on shipping um, we'd be able to see item profitability in the jobs area here so again you can it'll help you kind of really narrow down that you have X you know maybe $55 in sales and $55, $50 in cost so you're seeing that $5 margin in there okay so that's why it's helpful to also set it up as an item all right, that's non-inventory parts and other charges.